Thank you. My name is Rachel Malone. I'm representing Gun Owners of America and myself, and we are proud to support HB 1927. I want to thank Chairman Schwartner for your leadership in this committee and in sponsoring the bill through the Senate. And I want to thank Senator Springer, Senator Buckingham, Senator Hall, Senator Creighton for authoring or joint authoring related legislation and supporting the issue this session, the previous session. I want to thank all the committee members for being ready to listen and give thoughtful discussion. Um, on, on the testimony of so many GOA members of my organization who have waited for years to be able to talk in support of this policy in the Texas Senate. As you've heard, Texas is disturbingly behind the curve when it comes to recognizing the right to carry a handgun. 32 states, and you can see the map in your handout, 32 states allow permitless open carry, meaning if you can legally possess a handgun, you can carry it openly or visibly without getting a permit. And 20 states now recognize full constitutional carry so that anyone who can legally possess a firearm can carry their handguns open or concealed, no permit for required. This is plain common sense. If you can own it, you can carry it without asking for permission. Constitutional carry as a concept is quite simple. It means that if someone, for example, a single mom, wants to peacefully wear a holstered handgun to be ready to protect herself and her kids, and she's walking peacefully down the street, we shouldn't throw her in jail simply because she has failed to apply for a government permit. Constitutional carry repeals the requirement while keeping the option of an LTC for those who want it. It does not change who can possess a firearm, <clears throat> as you've already heard today. <clears throat> it does not affect purchase of firearms. It doesn't give anyone any authority to take a handgun out of their holster, and it certainly doesn't give any authority to use it for harm. This bill applies to those 21 and older who can legally possess a firearm. As has been stated by multiple senators today, that's exactly the same group of people who can carry a, hand, a handgun in their homes, on their property, in their vehicles, driving around town or around the state. This bill simply says those people can now get out of their vehicle and pump gas without having to go to jail. Data shows that constitutional carry increases safety. When states pass constitutional carry, violent crime rates go down. That includes murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, property crime, and vehicle theft. Some of the numbers are larger, a few may be statistically insignificant, but the point is violent crime certainly doesn't increase. And your handout, the chart on that reflects this. I believe that this is because getting rid of the permit requirement breaks down burdensome barriers to self-defense. Data shows that every day, Thousands of people in the United States use a gun to defend themselves, anywhere from uh, 1,300 to 8,200, according to the Centers for Disease Control in a study collected um, under President Obama. We are safer when we reduce barriers and we help more Texans to be able to protect their families, especially in poor and vulnerable communities. As you've heard, um, Arizona statistics show that in the 10 years after passing constitutional carry, the percentage of their population that had a license increased from 3.5% to over 5%. That means a greater percentage of their population had gone through the training requirement of a permit, even though it was voluntary. This lines up with the anecdotal evidence that we've heard from instructors in constitutional carry states saying that more people seek out training when training is voluntary. I've also given you a letter from Sheriff Mack of the Constitutional Peace Officers and Sheriff's Association showing strong support for constitutional carry from a law enforcement perspective. And this echoes what I've heard from many other county sheriffs all across Texas. You've heard a lot today about rights, and I'm sure you'll hear a lot more from the witnesses to follow. And I'd like to offer a reminder that government doesn't grant rights. Its purpose is to protect our rights not the least of which is our right to keep and bear arms. Today, in asking you to pass this bill, I'm simply asking you to recognize and codify in Texas law the natural right to self-defense and the constitutionally affirmed right to keep and bear arms. I urge you to pass constitutional carry in Texas. Mr. Chairman. Thank you.